there is nothing I like more than finding an absolute gem from a company that I've never heard of before. In this video, we're checking out this carbon fiber beauty. This is the Akoa TK Pro 424 carbon fiber tripod. We'll get into the nitty gritty of this tripod in a sec, but first, let me just give you a real quick background on my sordid past with tripods. One of my first tripods was this little Manfrotto travel tripod. It has this strange pistol-like grip and a proprietary plate here. I don't even think I have the plate anymore. I lost that years ago. Come to find out that using anything much bigger than like a point and shoot camera with this thing is just a recipe for disaster as far as stability goes. So realizing I needed something a little more stable, I found this old man Frodo tripod on Craigslist. It's all aluminum and it is freaking heavy. You have to actually pull the legs down yourself because they don't just slide down on their own when you unlock them. Eventually I just got sick of using super heavy tripods. So I set my sights on one made from carbon fiber. So I bought the Manfrotto 290 extra carbon fiber for about 275 bucks uh, on B&H. I mean, the legs are technically carbon fiber, but honestly, they feel pretty cheap and plasticky. And to be perfectly honest, my old aluminum cheap Manfrotto tripod was much more stable. So after this disappointment, I figured to get a nice light and stable tripod, I was probably gonna have to spend upwards of like a thousand bucks or more for something like a Sackler. But that's when this radiant piece of kit showed up and completely changed what I thought a great lightweight and sturdy tripod should cost. Full disclosure time, I was sent the ACOA to review, but they had zero input on this video, nor had they even seen this video before I put it out. Let's quickly go over the specs of the ACOA. It has 10 layer carbon fiber legs. The legs without a head on it can extend to about 62 inches. It packs up to about 22 inches and comes with a nice carrying case. At its lowest height, you're about four inches or so off the ground. It has nice thick legs with each section coming in at 36 millimeter, 32 millimeter, 28 millimeter, and finally 24 millimeter. It has these twist locks. It has a payload of about up to 66 pounds. The whole thing only weighs right around five pounds. It comes with rubber feet as well as spikes. And it has something really cool called the open platform. Let's start with talking about this whole open platform thing. The tripod basically supports three different setups. It can be in that standard sort of flat head configuration. Now you can pop that centerpiece out and drop in this 75 millimeter bowl to use a, a bowl tripod head, which you see a lot with video tripod heads. I don't have one handy, so I can't show you that configuration right now. Lastly, you can drop in a center column for more traditional photography type setup. This whole open platform thing makes this tripod super versatile, no matter what you're shooting. I mentioned the size of the legs on this thing. It, it can be a little hard to visualize just how large they are, but they are far bigger than any tripod I've ever owned. I have quite large hands, so you can kind of get an idea of how big these legs are when I grip them like this. And it's these large legs that help make this tripod so stable. Two of the legs also have this non-slip rubber padding, something that's really helpful as carbon fiber can actually get a little slippery, especially if you've got sweaty hands. Comparing this set of sticks to my carbon fiber Manfrotto tripod, honestly, there really is no comparison. The Manfrotto legs are much thinner and thus much less stable, especially out there at the ends. The Manfrotto legs almost feel like a toy where the legs on the Akoa feel solid and well-made. When I turn the twist locks, 
the legs just slide right down, just holding the Manfrotto tripod in. Honestly, it doesn't feel much different than some of the cheapo carbon fiber tripods I got and quickly returned to Amazon in the past. At 275, I just expected a lot more. The fit and finish of this tripod is way beyond the Manfrotto. You feel like you're holding a well-made, substantial piece of gear. The better build quality, the better fit and finish, better specs like higher weight capacity with larger, more stable legs. Not to mention the whole open platform thing. So basically for only $50 more, I got a tripod that completely blew that Manfrotto out of the water. Manfrotto does make some okay products. The more expensive higher end tripods are actually pretty good. But they're tripods that would be considered budget, like the under $300 or so. Th that quality just doesn't extend down to their lowest pr lower priced models in my opinion. Again, I feel it's important to say I'm not being paid to say anything good, bad, or ugly about this tripod. Thankfully, I'm at a point in my career where my opinion can't be bought for the cost of a tripod. If this tripod sucked, I would say so. That being said, it's my honest opinion. It, it's simply an amazing piece of gear. The jumping quality from that $250 Manfrotto to this $299 Akoa, it's night and day. I guess the ultimate point I'm trying to make is this. Even with a well-known name, it doesn't mean you're getting a piece of gear that's worthy of its price tag. It might be the company that you've never heard of before where you can find the real gems. And this tripod is a perfect example of that. I hope you found this little video useful. And if you've got any questions about this tripod, just let me know in the comments. If you're feeling generous, maybe even consider liking the video. It really does make all the difference. So until later, have a good one.